Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Games from Scratch, and today Houdini 17.5 was released. Now Houdini is one of those pieces of software I've been intending to talk about on this station for years. Uh, it's a company that holds a near and dear place to my heart because side effects, I used to live like two blocks away from their head office. They're right above my go-to Chipotle, in fact. And they have been making very, very interesting 3D software for over two decades now, dating back into the age of Silicon Graphics hardware and running on the IRIX operating system. Now Houdini has been mostly known in special effects work for motion picture and the like, but increasingly more and more as time goes on, they're getting into the game space and they're also getting much more affordable. This is software that used to cost anywhere between seven grand and 20 grand, but now we actually have some more accessible and indie focused pricing on Houdini. So I have been meaning to talk about it for a long time. Why haven't I? Well, to be honest, Houdini is also my great white whale. Now I use game engines and software like you wouldn't Believe. I move in and out of them and sort of from so much exposure I get used to learning new software. Houdini stumps me. This is a very confusing program for me and that's why I have never actually demonstrated it. With this release of 17.5 I can at least introduce it to you especially from the game development perspective because there is a lot of game development focus going on with Houdini these days. So first off let's jump in a bit about Houdini 17.5. Now I can't go into a whole lot of detail because you're going to find that Houdini land is acronym soup. So unless you use Houdini, what's new in Houdini 17.5 is not going to make a lot of sense to you. Uh, Houdini is a land of SOPs, POPs, CHOPs, COPs, DOPs, shops, ROPs, VOPs, TOPs, turn around, over, don't drop. This thing has so damn many acronyms. It's insane. And this is all about procedural. That's what the P in almost every one of those things is all about. This is a procedurally driven application. And that makes it incredibly powerful for certain things like flock, um, particle systems, creating procedural um, cities, that kind of stuff. This is where Houdini really, really thrives. So you can see these kind of graphs of nodes you create. I'm not doing any hands-on time with Houdini today because quite frankly, I can't use the damn program. But I do recommend you look into it if this appeals to you. So what we've got new in 17.5 is top is a PDG technology applied to Houdini. Top nodes integrate seamlessly with the rest of Houdini, brings the power of PDG to FX workflow, but it's not limited to FX. Facts. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, okay, so we've got um, distributed simulations are now available for narrowband and whitewater sims to make it easier to create larger simulations. Vellum, uh, to add more control with vellum per point constraints and fiber constraints have been added into Houdini. It allows you to do some really cool stuff here, like we can see some friction in vellum. action in this so video. So we introduced uh, and vellum they've got and different, uh, Houdini 17. Um, levels um, of, and of we're going to show you an example them, here. You'll see the immediate friction, something uh, that effect did not during the simulation before. and how it handles. And so you this can video see that these is a perfect of example of the kind guys. of stuff that um, Houdini where they've been painted for. with uh, on top of that uh, v GPU accelerated volumes uh, modeling got some new improvements like um, better selection options and um, new improved measure SOPs coincidentally SOP stands for surface operators just so you know uh, RBD RBD constraints when creating destruction shots the proper setup of constraints is key uh, that is easier now in Houdini 17.5 you can now create constraints interactively to more easily refine your setup and much much more shader parity uh, multiple outputs but where you want to do if you're new to 17.5 uh, there is a full to-do list I will make sure that this is linked for you down below low. Uh, nice thing is for almost everything that they've added, there is a video demonstrating it in action like the one we just watched. So that is 17.5 and that is what is new. So you can see the new selection tools here, for example, so you can kind of paint and have it dynamically grow your selections when modeling. Modeling is actually always where I kind of trip up in Houdini. So if I was you, I would start with more top level stuff if you if you get into it. Uh, but anyways, that is Houdini 17.5, a whole lot new there. Now I'm going to get into a little bit of why you should care as a game developer. First off, they have focused heavily on game dev. Um, so you see here some of their features they've got. Uh, a game reel and an indie game reel so you can actually see the kind of stuff that have been used for it. It's being used for things like real-time effects such as in Mafia 3, environmental creation like the forest in Far Cry 5 or the wilderness in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, you can use it for creating trains, um, procedural modeling, rock formations, herding rocks. Uh, we've got game development tools specifically like mesh tiling, texture sheet supports vertex animation, a simple baker, OSM importer, imposture textures, and more tools. And then you get into the cinematics and such. Now, now, the cool thing about Houdini is, once again, it was previously based on a number of different, or it was 
here. So let's say Houdini effects. This is what you would traditionally have thought of as Houdini. And if you go into buy Houdini effects, you will see it is still not the cheapest thing you have ever seen in the world. It's $4,500 USD, which is actually a discount over what it used to be. But you're looking at the same price as say Max and Maya. This is more for studios and so on. But the nice thing is they are targeting both um, game development and this is neat actually this is houdini engine which is kind of like the houdini dynamics runtime that can be embedded into other applications and game engines so you can actually use houdini simulations and tools uh, directly inside of max and maya oh sorry Maya Cinema 4D, but also they've got direct plugins for a game engine such as Unreal Engine and Unity. So if you want these really advanced dynamics or flocking simulations or uh, really involved procedural levels that you've generated, you can actually hook Houdini Engine directly into um, your game engine of choice. Uh, so there is the free Houdini Indie version, uh, which is uh, indie artists to have free access to running plugins or batch processing up to three computers which do not have uh, interactive licenses. Or you can get the Houdini Engine, and this is much cheaper. So you're looking here at $499 or $500. But perhaps more important, there's also Houdini Indie. And this is geared towards um, non-big studio developers. So if you make less than $100,000 a year, you qualify for Houdini Indie. And this is a slightly stripped down version. It's limited to something like 4K renders and a few other limitations on it. But as you can see, it is $269 a year or $399 for two years. As you can see, it is also available on Steam. So this is kind of a subset of Houdini, but it gives you most of what you would use to create games there. And it is a much more affordable price. Now, once again, the criteria is you must not exceed 100K USD license on your license. It's restricted to 4096 by 4096 when rendering animation. Um, it's got its own file format for importing and exporting, and it works with only a small subset of third-party renders, but otherwise, it is probably ideal for smaller time developers. As they mentioned in this list, Houdini is also available as Houdini Indie on Steam. If Steam is your thing, uh, it is available there, so you can get into it at a much cheaper price point. Now, I don't think they traditionally do sales on their subscription plans, um, I don't think I've ever seen Houdini as part of one of the Steam summer sales or anything like that, for example. But this is a definitely more affordable version of Houdini than like the $450, uh, 400, uh, sorry, $4,500 full-blown version. So if you want to start getting into it, there is a, a much more approachable price point. But it gets even better than that. They also have Houdini Apprentice, which basically lets you get in and use pretty much the full version of Houdini Effects. Uh, for non-commercial projects. So there would be the difference between Indie and um, Houdini Effects. Houdini Effects is purely for, sorry, uh, Houdini Apprentice is purely for learning, but you can try out pretty much the full blown, full fat version of Houdini using Houdini Apprentice. It's got watermarks on its render and um, as it says there, it is a non-commercial version, but you can jump in and download Houdini uh, Apprentice today. And 17.5 is already up for downloaded. You got a couple more limitations here. Uh, it's got its own version of for saving, so you probably won't be able to bring it up to the, the other versions. It's used for non-commercial projects. Uh, can't be used in the same pipeline as the commercial version. And 1280 by 720 rendering, and I believe there is a watermark on that as well. Yeah, watermarked. Um, and does not work with any third-party renders. So this is more about learning to use the software itself. But otherwise, it is pretty much what you are getting when you get Houdini effects. So you've got full-on access if you want to learn Houdini before you know committing to it, or if you just want to learn Houdini in general. Houdini Apprentice makes that very simple for you to do. Now, it's not simple to learn by any means, but they do actually have a decent amount of information available in their learning materials. So if you come in here, uh, they have instructions on learning game tools, on getting started, walkthrough. They've got tutorials. They have their own online resource with models and levels and scenes and everything like that that you can download and use in your game. And you can use this guy to do some really amazing things. Like I've seen some examples where they've done uh, dynamic racetracks and then they, they move the spline that represent the track and all the terrain around 
around it, updates and changes to go with it. So this could be your ideal level creation tool, or if you're creating a highly procedural game, Houdini could become your best friend. Uh, but you see here, they've got a lot of tutorials and run-throughs and stuff to get you up and going. I would just highly recommend, if you go down this road, dedicate yourself to it. I have not been able to really dedicate myself to learning Houdini, and as a result, I have never really learned Houdini. I would also argue that their modeling, I, I don't know that you would wanna model using Houdini in most cases, so don't start there. Normally, that's how I start when I learn a new 3D application, is I start with modeling, then move on to things like animation, dynamics, rendering, and so on. In this particular case, start with more high level. Start with existing scenes, and you know, don't start at the modeling level, because that is definitely where I found Houdini's experience to be the weakest and the point where I trip up the most. So, that is Houdini 17.5. Once again, this is a program that I should have covered ages and ages and ages ago and I just never did because basically it has kicked my butt every time I tried to learn it but it is getting more important more integrated into gaming more integrated into game engines more affordable more accessible and frankly more used this used to be a much more niche 3d application you had the big boys like max and maya and soft image and maybe a little bit of light wave that were heavily used for creating game levels and game assets and houdini was more about the whole um you know, special effects for films kind of thing, but that is all changing. And Houdini is being, you know, if you look at um, Maya examples or, or Unity examples lately, you're gonna start seeing more and more of them that are using Houdini as a basis. Uh, for example, there was uh, just last week, Houdini, or sorry, uh, Unity put up a thing about uh, special effects using it in their new special effects systems, and some of their examples were directly with Houdini. And you never saw that a couple of years ago. So this is becoming, uh, even though it's been around for 20 plus years, it is becoming more and more relevant and more and more powerful and more and more important to game development every day. So that is Houdini. I am going to give it one more shot, even if it is just because, you know, it's my hometown program, but I have to learn this one. It can't be my white whale forever. So anyways, that is Houdini. Do be aware, if you are jumping in, you are going to learn more acronyms than you ever wanted to in your entire life as you would be sleeping with your sops, pops, chops, sops, dops, and shops. But eventually, hopefully, it will all sink in and make sense to you. Are you a Houdini user? If so, can you chime in and say how it does it shine or does it shine for game development? Do you use it for modeling? I, I can't fathom too many people do that, but I would love to hear from you if you do. And if so, why do you use it? Um, and yeah, that's it. It's a very unique program. So, you know, a lot of times when I feature a 3D application, you say, oh, you can do this in Blender. <laughs> Not in this case. A lot of what is done in Houdini can almost uniquely be done in Houdini. So definitely check it out. If nothing else, go through some of their demo reels for game dev stuff. You will be impressed, even if you walk away incredibly confused. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.